Hey everyone, so we're going to be talking about shapes in Adobe After Effects today. So while AE is an animation software, not a drawing one, shapes still play a big role. You can use them in masks, which are a technique that lets you cut out, so to speak, outlines and shapes of different objects or cover up parts of them. We have a tutorial on those on our YouTube channel. Some effects can be achieved with placing them onto specific shapes. And of course, just having a basic circle or square to animate on the fly is very useful. So let's get started. So the shape tool is over here on the toolbar. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is making a new shape layer, which is, as the name says, is a layer made for shapes. So we'll go up to here, layer new, and we will make a shape layer. Great. Now you can see that my cursor has a little star next to it. That means that I am about to make a shape. I've got the shape tool activated. By clicking and holding on the shape menu, a drop down menu appears. So the first two are uh, self-explanatory. The rounded rectangle is a rectangle with rounded edges. The polygon tool allows you to draw out a shape that has more than five sides. The ellipse tool is either for an ellipse or a circle. And the star tool lets you make stars with different amounts of points. So by pressing Q on my keyboard, I can toggle between the different shape options as you can see over here. So let's start with a rectangle. So by clicking and dragging, I'm making a rectangle. And you see it has a yellow outline. That's called a stroke. The black part is called a fill. So the fill is the middle. The stroke is the outline. So now if I were to click and drag out while holding shift on my keyboard, I am dragging out a perfect square. So I'm actually gonna go with a general rectangle shape. Now head down here into the layer stack over here and you'll see that our shape layer one, the one that we just made, now the contents contain a rectangle, just one rectangle. I'm gonna toggle them open because I wanna show you how to round the edges on this rectangle without making a rounded uh, rectangle over here. Um, and the reason for that is maybe you want to animate that property. I don't know. I mean, you could do it with a rounded rectangle too, but I don't know. Maybe you really like rectangles. So we're going to go over to rectangle path one. Now again, stroke is what this outer line is. A fill is what the inside is, but the path is what determines what the shape is. So after toggling open rectangle path one, you see this, this is roundness. So I can change this number and bigger makes it more round and smaller makes it more pointy. Now, if I want to change the size of this thing, I click and drag on one of these corners and I can manipulate the size that way. So rectangle and rounded rectangle basically work the same. The rounded rectangle just has that property, uh, that rounded property turned up more. So I'm gonna delete this rectangle because now I want to make an ellipse over here. So I select my shape tool and like before, I can either drag it out like this, or if I want, I can hold down shift and it'll be a perfect circle. So that's honestly it for circles. They're not that complicated. Like before, you know, if I want, I can press V for my selection tool and I could just resize it like that. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's a circle. I'm gonna delete that. And finally, let's get on to the last two, the polygon tool. So when I first dropped my polygon, it's appearing as a hexagon but I can adjust the number of size in a couple of different ways. So I can toggle open from contents to polystar. It, it's going to be uh, described as a polystar in the layer stack. I'm gonna open up polystar path. And how many points? I want 72 points. I want only three points. Now it's a triangle. I want five points. It's a pentagon. So by adjusting how many points, that'll give you how many sides it's got. The more uh, points, the rounder and rounder and rounder it is. By the way, you might have caught on by this point, but polystar and polygon are actually related shapes. But a star is just a polygon automatically with the settings set to a star-like shape. You'll see what I mean as we go along. Outer radius, you know, how big is it? Outer roundness, how pointy is it? Like that. And if I go negative, look at that. It kind of inverts in on itself. That's pretty cool. By the way, you can animate all of these. If I have a stopwatch next, next to them, you can animate all these properties. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to make another polygon. And don't let go of your mouse button for this technique. So I haven't let go. I'm still creating my polygon. But if I were to press left or right, I can control the radius of my shape. And if I press up or down on my arrow keys on my number pad, I can control how many sides it has without ever letting go. Now I have a triangle. So, and finally, the star tool. Honestly, it works the same. I'm dragging it out. It kind of looks like a flower because uh, it's quite round. I have my settings to be quite round, but I want it pointy. So I'm hitting my left arrow tool, too pointy. And I think one, uh, you know, more like uh, a six pointed star. There we go. Nice mug and David, you know, for Kanika's coming up. So, uh, 
easy way to make some nice Hanukkah graphics. All right. And, you know, or it could be like whoosh, an explosion, very, very pointy. This is basically the same as the polygon tool, like I mentioned. You can see, toggle it open. And it just has, you know, all these uh, points and has all the same properties as before. But the difference is that it's set to star instead of polygon because a star will have uh, another um, another set of properties over here. Inner roundness, outer roundness. See, like if I want to make it nice and round, I would get that flower shape like before. It looks like it's from SpongeBob. But yeah, that's really the main difference. I'm actually gonna drag this down. I hit V for my selection tool. I'm gonna drag this down so we can see it better. Now let's learn how to change some uh, of the color and the properties here. So fill color, you go up to here where it says fill and you click the box next to it over there. And let's make it blue. Let's make it blue. No, let's make it white or I don't know which we color it. This is fine. Um, actually I want it pink. I'm, I'm being indecisive, but I like this color scheme. So, and then I hit OK. And if I want to change the stroke color, I can make that white. Now, if I want, with the color picker, I can actually click the eyedropper and just pull it from the background, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make it white, and that's fine. I'm going to hit OK. Now, if I don't want a stroke or I want to make it very thin, I can control how thick it is by turning it up turning it down like that so it's invisible. If I want to get rid of either the fill or stroke, you click the name, not the color, click the name and click this little strike through box. These other two are gradients, but I think those are getting a bit more into the nitty gritty. Um, I'm going to hit cancel because I want the stroke. Uh, I'm going to make it nice and thick. Whoops, too thick. And I'm going to get, now I'm going to get rid of my fill. So I'm going to hit that strike through box after clicking the fill name, I'm going to hit okay. And now it's empty. Finally, I want to show you how drawing out multiple shapes without new shape layers will put them all on one layer. So check this out. I'm just going to hit Q and I'm going to make a rectangle. And again, I haven't deleted this. I haven't made a new shape layer, but I'm just drawing pretty much straight on this layer and I'm making a bunch of new shapes. And you see they all appear underneath this one layer. If I were to hit the visibility, which is this eyeball thing here, this eyeball icon, they all disappear. And I can actually make them disappear, you know, each by themselves. And every single one has its own contents. It has its own path and stroke and fill. And I can make the fill appear and disappear and all sorts of things. And I can add all sorts of uh, effects to these. This is useful for uh, masks, particularly effects, or if you just prefer that kind of organization. I personally prefer the animation control that comes with making new shape layers for each. But this is very much like a matter of taste and what's best for uh, each technique and task. So I think, you know, as you use these shapes, you'll, you'll come up with your own style of using them. So yeah, that's been uh, Shapes.